Hello everyone, welcome to the backtracking series of videos. So in the previous video, I have explained the permutation one problem. So in this video, I will explain permutation two problem and the problem number is 47. So the problem statement is saying given a collection of numbers, nums that might contain duplicates, return all possible unique permutations in any order. So suppose one uh, array is given to you that has duplicate numbers 112 you have to find all the permutations like 112 will be a result then 121 and 211 so uh, in some examples maybe there is no repetitive numbers so that case also 123 has this many combinations so how is this problem is different from permutation one problem that is in permutation one problem there were no duplicates that's why it was easy to handle but in this case you have to handle the duplicate case also because 112, 121, 211 all are different combinations. How to solve that thing? Now we will check. But before that, I will highly recommend you to go to the video permutation 1 because that logic is almost similar we will use here. Let's take one example numbers array which has duplicate numbers like 11233. And we have to create all the permutations of this numbers array. Before that, we will do a quick recap like what we did for permutation 1. So in permutation 1, we have one array where only distinct values are there like 1, 2, 3. And we draw one decision tree out of it and this was looking like this. So what we are doing for this decision tree? So basically what we are doing is first we are starting with one number. then that number we are keeping in a list and that list will have three as a length then only we can collect that as a result next time if we have to choose anything then we have to make choice apart from one because one is already taken so that's why we choose between two and three but first time we went with two now we fill the second position also for third position, what are the choice left for us? That is 3 because 3 don't contains in this list but 2 and 1 already contains. So that's why 3 was left as a choice for us. So every time when we are going forward, we are checking that in the list, this item which I am going to include is already present or not. If it is not present, then I will make use of it as a choice. So as only district numbers was there, that's why it was easy for permutation one. Because in the growing list, we were just checking if the current number is already included or not by doing a list dot contents, right? But the same logic we can't apply here for duplicate case because ultimately we have to make use of all the numbers like 2, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3. In this case, if we do a list dot contains, then what will happen is, suppose first value is there, and if we check that other values we can include or not, this one we will not take because this list already contains one. So that time we have to omit this one but that will produce a wrong result. Instead of that, what we have to do is, we have to keep count of all the distinct numbers and we have to check like how many time I have used that one. If they have still count, then I can again make use of that. Suppose for a growing list, I have used one once. That means next time again, I have choice to use one, two and three because one is one time used still I have left one one so when that will also be used so after one I have used another one that time one is already fully used so that time I have a uh, choice to use two and three because they have count still greater than zero so what kind of data structure will help us to keep the distinct numbers and their count obviously the choice will be a hash map so we will take one hash map first 
and we will build this map like what are the distinct numbers are there and how many times they are available then we will do our decision tree and structure it that we will see next so now we will tackle this problem so numbers array from there first I created the map where it is saying what are the distinct elements are there and how it is their count so one is present two times two is present one time and three is present two times so if we start from here the decision is we can use either one two and three so I can start with one or I can start with two or I can start with three let's say first start with one then in the next level what are the elements I can use so if I already used one then that will be reduced by count one so it will be now one now I have to check how many other possibilities are there which is greater than zero all are possible because everyone is present greater than zero so from here I have taken decent to use either one or two or three now let's say I started with another one then what are the choice left so this one will become zero because this is fully used so next time I have choice only to use two and three because they are greater than zero so I can use two or three let's say if we started with two then what will happen two also I have to reduce so it will become zero now what choice I have only I can use three so I have to use three here then three will be reduced to one now next what choice I have which one is greater than zero only three so I have to take another three and as the count is now five so we collected one result and that will be one one two three three right now how I'll get the other combinations so now we have to check that from here we don't had anywhere to go so we have to backtrack here here also no other junctions created so we have to backtrack to here till and while we are doing backtracking from here onwards I have to go to the other part so this 2 3 and 3 will be again available so I have to like put it back right so this is where backtracking work also so now I have like 3 2 3 is there and we have one available 2 also but 1 is completely used because 1 and 1 is already there so second time I can use 2 and 3 again but 2 is already used in this path so I can use 3 here and then as 3 is used so it will be 1 now uh, from here what are the choice left so I can use either 2 or 3 cool if I go with 2 then 2 is used and it will become 0 so after this I have only choice to make as 3 so if you look at now 1 1 3 2 3 this is also a permutation similar way in this case after 3 only 2 will be remaining so that I can use if you do continuously for the other cases also you will get all the combinations so this is the way we have to use map and we have to decrease or increase the ground to make all the possible permutations while going deep as a DFS if I am going deep that time we have to reduce the counts from the map while coming back or while doing a backtracking so whatever things is again available we have to like increase the count for that I hope you uh, understood this one now we'll see the coding so now here we will talk about the solution the solution is simple maybe it is looking longer code but it is very simple 
So first what we have to do is this method will be provided to us and we have to additionally write one method for doing the DFS call. So first what we have to do is we have to define a list of list of integer result because that is our return type. And then we have to define a map as I told and in the map we have to take all the distinct numbers and their count. So this is a very common code used in every program right to take the number and its count. Now we have to do a DFS call where I have to pass the numbers array then the result and the new array list and map. So if we look here uh, this numbers array only we are using to take its length. So you can directly pass the length also no need to pass the whole numbers array. Now what we have to do is in the DFS call what we are doing is the base condition to stop it is if my list size is equal to the numbers dot length that means we completely grown one result then we have to collect that as a result and as a new array list and we have to destroy the uh, like link or reference because Java is passed by reference. Now what we have to do is we have to iterate over every key so we are iterating on the map for every key so we are getting the key and value out of the set entry set and you are checking if the value is greater than 0 or not that means for this particular number is there any count left or not if it is there then we are adding it to the list which is my running list where we are collecting the current result and then we are doing a map dot put the value minus one that means we are reducing that as a count because just now we use that one and we are doing again a DFS call to go to the next level and passing the same things after finishing the DFS call when we are coming back or doing a backtracking that time we are removing that element means the last element from the list and as well as we are increasing the count also because now that particular number is again available in the map so for that key we have to increase the count also by one and then if we do this thing repeatedly or recursively we will get all the combinations that we have to return as a result now if we submit it it is working thanks for watching <laughs>